place wherever you are. For your name is holy. Worship God. Let's worship God. Holy Jehovah Provider, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Jireh, the God of Abraham, God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. 
we worship you, Lord. 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 What is the Lamb? You are holy, say you are holy. You are holy. Let's worship God Almighty. Let's glorify God Almighty. Please worship Him, 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 let's worship God of Gauls, the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings is the one that brought money out of the mouth of a fish is the great provider is the jehovah jireh is our yesterday is our today is our tomorrow let's bless his name he turned the situation of jabesh from being poor to being rich is our yesterday is our today is our tomorrow let's just worship him this God is good. This God means well for us. This God wants us to prosper. This is God Almighty that is the maker of heaven and earth. The gold, the diamond that will be used in the next trillion years, he has provided it. The God of gold is his name. Please worship him. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped. Our Father and our Lord, we have come one more time to meet with you. Please speak through me. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of the hearts of your people be acceptable unto you in Jesus' mighty name. Please be seated. I thank the pastor for sharing this exalted altar with me at this hour. It is a real privilege and I'm not taking it for granted. The topic is established in abundance. For us to be able to flow in this second service, it will be critically important that we give a summary of what was discussed during the first service, we defined, established, uh, meaning sustained and retained and long lasting. We, des de we described abundance as plentifulness in great quantity, ample, lavish, bountiful, overflowing, and so on and so forth. We also reminded each one of us about the situation in Nigeria, in Ondo Town, and globally. Uh, and I said there is a storm that started from the pandemic, and the storm will not go until Jesus intervenes. And I told those who were here in the morning that as the storm is raging, you should go to sleep. But make sure when you are sleeping, Jesus is by your side. Otherwise, the storm may be catastrophic. We also said that things may probably get worse because we are consuming what we are not producing and we are producing what we are not consuming. We predicted that Naira may start exchanging close to a thousand in few uh, months time and that is not strange euro that used to exchange for one dollar forty is now exchanging one dollar to one euro we now asked each of us can there be prosperity that could be sustained given this storm the answer is no if you don't have Christ the answer is yes if you have Christ we discussed the path because being established in abundance is a journey 
you start from the beginning and you end in abundance. And we were able to show that the population of the world could be divided into six groups. The majority, 40%, are at the carpet level, where Satan resides. That is the stage where you can hardly eat, you can't pay your rent. Uh, every day in the house is quarrel between husband and wife. Because if you remove finance from the home, 90% of quarrels will stop. Um, we also mentioned, among other things, that 40% that stays in the carpet level can move out of it with the involvement of God. And that next to the 40% is the 20% that they have money, but they are mediocre. You can be a branch manager, you can be oil and gas magnet, and you are still stupid in the way you spend your money and your attitude to money. This is the stage where you find people who would rather spend money on musicians or a lady that would take loan to buy jewelries from a sister in Dubai. And the sister is in the church. And you are buying it. You are stupid. That is the fact. You are rich, but you are a mediocre. So that is the second stage. We also mentioned in the morning the 15% people who are involved in occultism, Yahoo boys and all that. And when you're in the Owo Nikoko family, all they care about is money. The first set, the 20%, is the Nina Lowo's family. Why do we have the money if I cannot drink exotic champagne when you should be investing? The 12%, which I believe at the end of this service, all of us will belong to, at least if you are not already established in abundance, is the transition group who we say enough is enough. I now want God to be involved. I don't want to be, because there is a, a credit card that allows me to spend and pay later. I would rather cut that credit card and live within my means. That's the transition. That was where Anna was. That was where Jabez was. And remember, even at the carpet level, you can transition. Even at the occultic level, you can transition. And at the mediocre level, you can transition. I was once a mediocre, so I know what I'm talking about. Mediocre in the sense that I wasted money. I told you guys in the first service, there were parties I will attend. My friends who know have arrived at the party from the way the drama changes drumming. And they've not seen me. Then I was a mediocre. Thank God for the transition from mediocrity to getting God involved. From transition, you can now move to the level of flourishing. That's when you don't have a problem. You can pay your bills, you can do whatever you are doing. You are not wasting your money on frivolities. God is involved, but you are still not established in abundance. Abundance, when you are established there, that is when you are so blessed. Remember, it doesn't mean you have money. It's not in the quantum of the money you have. You can be a messenger and be blessed in abundance because the promise of God and abundance as far as we are concerned is not denominated only in money. It's abundance in prosperity, it's abundance in good health, and it's in abundance in the soul. So don't say, I have to be a multi-millionaire before I could be described as established in abundance. If you are into good works, you will have reached that stage. So that's the summary of what was discussed. Of course, we dealt in details with this, but it's important we lay this foundation before we proceed so that you can 
if I'm referring to one stage or the other, you at least would know what I'm talking about. Now, we said it's a journey. If it's a journey, then there must be steps. The steps must be taken as you are progressing. My prayer for you is that as you are taking steps forward, Satan will not take you backwards in Jesus' name. Business literatures have it all. I can't, it's, it's, it's inexhaustible. Strategic planning, preparedness. You must have vision. vision. All good stuff, stuff, which you can which you do, 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 which you can which adopt, adopt as, as a business, a business person, person, as a, as a career, career as a person, or whatever, or whatever you may be. But for you to be established in abundance, for you to move into being established in abundance, and I gave an example of a family that is already established in abundance. I'm bold to say that our daddy Gio and mommy Gio are examples of those that have been established in abundance. It does, I'm not saying because they have so much. It's because of their disposition towards the blessing God has given them. And I told the first, uh, at the first service that if you are, if you are in a position to receive gifts from Mommy Gio, then you understand what I'm saying. And I learned that she's been doing that even when she was struggling. When this uh, mother gives you gifts, she doesn't give you a gift that is meant for you alone. I remember years ago, we received some gifts from, from her. It was enough to go for, for me to spread through all my workers in the factory. And it was a gift to me. But the, my mother in Israel already knew that I have some numbers of dependents. When the thing arrives, they will know something arrives. And I just, would I take five cartons of milk alone? I will be a visitor to the doctor. That is being established in abundance. She sent diaries to me. You can only use one diary in a year. For this, our mother sent 12 of them. It means you must be a blessing to other people. That is being established in abundance. I pray in your lifetime, you will be a testimony in abundance in Jesus' name. So, we must be careful. Proverbs 23, 5. Proverbs 23, 5 says, While thou set thy eyes upon which is not, for riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away as an eagle toward heaven. Here I'm talking to those who, who are currently mediocre. They are rich in their own eyes. But they are mediocre in disposition and attitude to work an attitude to spend it. So the steps we are going to take in our discussion today will be taken from Proverbs 24, verse 3. By the way, the book of Proverbs, as far as I'm concerned, is the best literature in business management. And that is why I make it a point of duty to read a chapter a day. Fortunately, it has 31 chapters. So when I finish reading in Yoruba this month, this month I'm reading in Yoruba. Next month I'll probably go to NIV. The coming month, another NLT. If you are running business and you are not conversant with that book, you need help. Because everything you need to run your business is the revelation for businessmen. So Proverbs 24.3 says, Through wisdom, 
is an house built, it, and by understanding it is established. I will change that. I will say, true wisdom is abundance established, and by understanding it is sustained. Wisdom does not come from me, does not come from you. It comes from God. So, to be established in abundance, you need wisdom of God. James 1.5, James 1.5 says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that gives to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. So God will give you and God will give you abundantly in the name of Jesus. Psalm 51 verse 6 Psalm 51 verse 6 says Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. You will all know wisdom in Jesus' name. If you know wisdom Sonia Ade cannot tell you your father killed an elephant with his cap and you will give him his money. You give him your money. It is not true. How can somebody kill an elephant with cap and your end, end, end money and you are giving it to this man who can pay your own bills? May God give us wisdom in Jesus' name. Solomon said in Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 13, chapter 1, verse 13. And he said, And I gave my heart to seek and search out by wisdom concerning all things that are done under heaven. And God answered him. He gave him wisdom. Is it accidental that the wisest man in the world is the richest man that will ever be? It is not. He gave him wisdom, and with wisdom comes uh, wealth in abundance. Again, I say unto you, God will grant you wisdom. Amen. The second one is understanding. And this is where the theories of business comes in. Every book in business is talking about understanding and knowledge. They ignore the wisdom of God. You know what Job said in 32, 8. Job 32 verse 8. He said, but there's a spirit in man. And I, I'm bold to say that spirit is the Holy Spirit. And the inspiration of the Almighty give it understanding. I recall the story of the man who, I think I've shared it with the church once, about Dudu Osu. The man had a dream. And he was told, mix a uh, soap with onion and um, do it this way, do it that way. The next morning, his staff were making jest of him. How you are talking of onion. How does it fit in? But he said, God told me that is the way I should do it. Today, Dudu Osun is selling in the Caribbean like hot cake. I've also passed through Ikiri a couple of times. So one day I asked, this Dudu Ikiri, why is it this, what, what is this about Dudu Ikiri? And I had the story of the woman who should be a lecturer in business school. That he came, she, the woman came from work and wanted to feed her children. And there was nothing at all. And he now, she now wanted to prepare Dudu and discovered that the plantain was too ripe for how can these children eat this thing? And she had an understanding that if you mix this with it, you put pepper, you do this and that, this woman packaged it. Suddenly the thing was more than the children could take and the plantain is already spoiled. So he, she gave some to his neighbors. The children ate. The next day, the neighbors say, Mama Dudu Anayenko. And then there was inspiration. And the woman started preparing Dudu. That's how Dudu Ikiri came to be. If he had gotten 
some wisdom of God combined with this, it would have been a franchise. It says it's a shame that the decree is still selling within Ikiri. Somebody should have taken it elsewhere. That is understanding that is divine. And then the third one is knowledge. Proverbs 24 verse 4. Proverbs 24 verse 4. And by knowledge shall the chambers be filled. You have established. You have gotten understanding. Now the chambers will be filled with all precious and pleasant riches by knowledge. No wonder God said, my people, my business, your business, God forbid, is destroyed by lack of knowledge. It is not knowledge that is ordinary. It should be knowledge of God. Hosea said it, Hosea chapter 4 verse 6a, my people are destroyed by lack of knowledge because they rejected knowledge. May you not reject knowledge in Jesus' name. So whether you are establishing a new business or you are re-engineering old business or you are consolidating plans to grow in your career, you need wisdom, you need understanding, you need knowledge. Now, how do we put this to work? Putting wisdom, understanding, and knowledge into action. I've said to you that in business, you will hear people say you need divine call, you need planning based on clear vision. The common statement is that if you, do, if you, if you fail to plan, you will, you will plan to fail. If that is true. Adequate preparation, market, seg market segmentation, small beginning, you have integrity, you mix specialization with diversification, and you have the fear of God. Those are well-known principles. I think we can add some little more. Whether you are in category one, which is in paid employment, or you are in category B, that's a business person, you must learn what to do. As a worker, as a staff in a place, you need emotional intelligence. The kind of intelligence that Jacob had. You must be confident. You must have eagerness to, to learn new things. You must be dogged in faithfulness. And you must have secondary income. With the storm that is going on now, you can't rely on what you are earning. Mothers, listen. Why must my uh, daddy buy potato, uh, tomato. Let, let him take care of the protein. Let him buy the, the meats, the, the, all this other thing. Can't you plant tomato that your children will eat at your backyard? That's emotional intelligence. Don't put pressure on this man too much so that I won't run away. This, the, the storm is going to be severe. The storm is strong. Only God will help us. Let, let daddy face the big problems and you face the small ones. And I kept wondering, particularly those of us who are young, um, Nigeria, particularly Yorubas, we spend, we like meat so much. We like beef. We are complaining about s men And we can't stop. The solution is when Aulawa was in, in, in government, he had his solution to winning wars. You may not agree, but that, is, that, that has worked. Why still buy if you don't buy, they won't, they won't come, right? But if we must buy, and if we must eat, why not have your own? And in anticipation of that, I got involved with uh, FAO, 
And guess who came to teach us how to raise cattle that will not graze? Akari Lulu said, cattle must not roam about. Fine. How do we raise cattle that will not roam about? An FAO recruited Fulani professors. And they came to Akure to teach us how you can graze without, how you can raise cattle without grazing. And something struck me again. I asked the question. I've been to Texas, I see cattle, we call them wolves because they are very big. To know if your cattle is big or not, you put your hand like this at the back. If you can feel any penis not big enough, what's the secret? The secret? I was, I was told the cattle, the cattle spend, spend what they eat, trekking. So if the cattle eats air and is trekking for one mile, he's already using what he has eaten to trek. So, but if you put it in an enclosure, so to say, and it, it eats there, does everything, before you know it, it will become big. Why don't we form a cooperative? a cooperative of redeemed cattle rearers and get a one acre land, surround it with a fence, put 10 cows there. By the special grace of God, as he did for Jacob, 10 cows will become 100 shortly. So why don't we do it? It's called emotional intelligence. Stop complaining, act, and stop murmuring. And if you're a civil servant, the only job you're allowed to do for second income is farming. So why not do it? Somebody will say, but where is the money? The money is there. It's just for you to see the seriousness of it in you, and there are intervention funds. Opportunities will arise for us to discuss this further. If you are self-employed, you've been warned against some sentiments. If you want to move into being established into abundance, there are certain things you must not do. If you want to stay at the realm of mediocrity, where you are rich, you take champagne in the morning, you take NSC in the afternoon, and you go out in the evening to go to the club and use your left hand to be spraying the musician, then you can do all these other things I'm talking about. But if you want to move into the transition era, into the flourishing, and into the abundance, there are certain things that you mu must not be found in you. There are statements that people say that must not be found in your mouth. Is a rat race out there? Only the rats are winning. The last time I checked the Bible, God did not make you rats. So why are you in a rat race? Nice guys finish last. Says who? The, all the people God has endowed with wealth and abundance, they are nice people, at least by the standard of righteousness and wickedness. You will hear people say, winning isn't everything is the only thing. No, there are battles you win and there are wars you will lose in the process. Please beware. You must not have the Esau spirit, we said it in the morning, of kill it all and eat it all. The downfall driver mentality. When there is a strike in, in Lagos, before the strike begins at 6 a.m., what is Arija de Wakiru? The strike will happen when it closes at 6 p.m. They will rush out and, and what do they do with the money? They go to Mama Put and spend all the money, killing it all and eating it all. We must be consuming what we are producing. That's what I'm saying about our men and women. There should be no peer pressure. Get up and go to work. You've got to consult God. You've got to honor God, and if you do all that, leave the rest to God. If you are an elder, 
and you are in the flourishing group, and you see there are people in the carpet level, what are you doing? It is our duty, as Elisha was praying for that servant, for God to open his eyes. We must tell our youths to open their eyes. You can find that in 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 19, uh, verse 17. 2 Kings 6, 17. For, for the eyes to be opened is not proximity to the pastor. If you are close to our Father in the Lord, your eyes may not be opened. Your eyes will be opened through what you've heard him say about how eyes are being opened. Some want to be busy working in the house of God, but not active. The, the matter spirit versus the Mary spirit. Jesus Christ, can you see Mary? is not helping us to prepare food for you. And Jesus said, that which she is doing is better than what you are doing. May God help us in Jesus' name. Remember, keys are not given to those who did not receive revelation. I can tell you, in my days of mediocrity, I didn't have the keys. It's only when the keys were given to me through revelation that the story changed. Being close to the pastor, as I said, is like all the other disciples, except Peter. What do people say I am? And Peter said, you are the son. Oh, uh, it is only God that could have revealed that to you. And what did he do? He handed out the key upon your rock will my church will be established. The position you will be to receive that key, God will take you there today in Jesus' name. So let's be specific. Young men, young women, what do you need to do? Of course, older people that has not become Igugweja can also learn from what I'm talking about. But I'm more interested in the youth. You must cultivate patience. The difference between you and the Yahoo boys and those that are in occultic realm is lack of patience. The word patience also means stamina. I remember when I was about to start the factory, as part of my search for knowledge, I met a man, those who have been in the industry. The first thing the man asked me, he said, Sir, share a lock Then I said, ah, I think so. He said, because this business you are going, if you don't have stamina, and my pastor can testify to the fact that, thank God he told me that. Year one, in the middle of nowhere, 1,000 uh, KVA transformer got bombed. We can't produce. Second year, the same transformer. Then I said, insurance did not include transformer. I changed my insurance, and I put transformer. Third year, transformer. And then a leader in the kingdom of darkness came to approach me. I said, what is the in you? This kind of thing, we know what to do. He came to evangelize to me. And thank God for the word of God. Because I knew he has sound bites but I have the word. So, as he's saying it, God was bringing what I will. I, around you, this person, we did something for him. We can do the same for you. I had to counter it by saying, you know the person's name is so, 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 but my own name is Ade Ayola. We are different people until he find his way out of my premises. So you need patience. And who had the greatest patience we can think about? Is Isaac. The first well. The second well. The third well. The man did not stop building wells. 
He built the first one. The Philistines strove with him. He called it Ezek, which means strife. He built the second one. They contended with him. He called it Sitna, which means hate. You can see the progress. Strife, anger, hate, jealousy. I can tell you, please be prepared. In this era of storm, you will confront all, but God will give you the strength to defeat in Jesus' name. Strife produced anger, which became it. But Isaac, when he was reviled, he did not revile back. If you look at 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 23, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 23, when he was reviled, reviled not again, but committed himself unto him that judged righteously. He avoided conflict and moved on and had the third well, which was being referred to in John 4. Can you imagine? That well of that time was sustained because what? It was established and it was still being referred to in the New Testament. So when they throw, what, what is the lesson here? And how can you relate to your situation? How can I relate to my current situation? Because you will confront your own well. And you must learn what Isaac did. When they strove with him for the first well, he didn't understand what was going on. You and I, we must have been in such situation before. Promotion is due. They did not give you. And you did not understand what is going on. When they strode with him for the second one, he observed what businessmen we call location dynamics. He noticed that there's something wrong with this place I am. Let me change. There was location dynamics, there was distance dynamics, there was geographical dynamics. And realized that where he put the well was not to his advantage. So his choices were with, with, he was operating within a disloyal environment. But he now did the third one at the right place, which he called Rehoboth. As in, now I have space. I pray that space that God has prepared for you, you will have it and reach it in Jesus' name. God will make room for you in Jesus' name. What is a well to you? What is a well to me? Well is source of where you get water, which is the source of life. Is it your career that they are contending with? Are you a student that your lecturer is saying, if you don't sleep with him, he won't pass you? That's your well number one. You have well number two where you are doing well, your mates are envious of you. You pray that God must make room for you in due course. If you do that, you will experience what Isaac experienced. Suddenly, Abimelech, the king of the environment, had to bring people to come and pay homage to Isaac. They saw him during the first well. They saw him during the second well. But when God has now made room for him, they want to partake in the blessings. As God established you in, a, in, in, in abundance, people will see you are a source of blessing in Jesus' name. So, learn to be patient. Young men, learn to be patient. There are deals today, there will be deals tomorrow. Don't rush and take decisions that you will regret for life. Remember, this period is a period of calamity. This period is a period of scarcity. This period is a period of tension. But have you forgotten that God actually knows how to bless people during a period of calamity? What of Joseph? Joseph 
woke up in the morning as a prisoner. He slept on the bed as a prime minister because of famine. The calamity of famine elevated Joseph. The calamity of captivity elevated Daniel. The calamity of grief made Ruth to be a progenitor of Jesus Christ today. So what is it that you are going through in your workplace? What is that? I, I don't even know how to pay my, school, my children's school fees. Wake up and convert your calamity to prosperity. Because Jesus knew about your situation. And, and when he saw it, he went to sleep. To sleep. Storm will, storm will not go. go. All, we, All need we need is to be right, be right with, with God. God. And God will intervene. God will intervene in Jesus' name. So, the next thing you need to start doing is thinking. It may sound ordinary. Start thinking more. Start thinking more deliberately. Let's African magic take less of your time. Start thinking. It is the thinking about the Fulani X-Men that will lead you to eat chicken instead of beef. It is the thinking that will make you to say, I even want to make money out of this situation by raising cattle that will not graze. It is the thinking that will make you look around you in Nondo and discover that there's a scarcity of something that you can do to make money. Thinking, thinking, as captured in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 20. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 20. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly, above all that we ask or think, that tells me you must think of something, then God will now work on it and establish it exceedingly. I come to realize that thoughts takes a wider range than prayers. Because before you, you even say it out, God knows what you are thinking. In the abundance of your heart, man thinketh. What is in your heart? What are you thinking? To move from mediocrity to flourish and for flourish to abundance. Please think outside the box. Young men, you have strength, but you don't but you have strength and you have time, but you don't have wisdom. Those of us who are not that young, there is no time. There is no energy. So why don't you grab wisdom and join your own? critical resources of strength and time. And for that to be translated into abundance, you need to start thinking. Think of basic things that are not available. Think of experimenting, but don't stay too long in thinking. You have to act on your thoughts. Number three, get the right partnership, including spouse and help meet. Don't look for help meet. Help meet is different from help meet. Help meet is the person who will compliment you. You want to send your child to school. Either the husband or the wife comes and say, because our cousin's children are attending social school, my own child too should attend that school. That partnership will have K-leg because, as I said, you are not a right, you are not involved in rat race. So the first, partner, the first partnership you must establish is with God. I was not doing that. I was having partners with men. Today, if I want to hire a cook, I must pray about it. I will ask for your name. Uh, and I said, you've done well. We did the interview. Give me three days. And I will go fasting. Cook is not 
It's not a... Uh, but I know through him or her, conspiracies can enter. Anything, Satan could have his leg through the path. What are you doing? If I can, if I can pray for a cook, why you young single men and women, why don't you pray before you get into relationship that is matrimonial? In praying for partnership, be mindful of shareholding. There are things you cannot do alone, so you need partners. Partnership that are profound. Partnership that are not based on sentimental feelings. Seek legal opinions. Don't think you know it all. There were days when to establish a bank in this country, you must bring somebody from the north to be the chairman. And uh, as you have Fulani S men, there are Fulani S businessmen. I'm using that word not as to counter or castigate Fulani, but I'm saying as you have it in the Fulanis, you have also Yoruba betrayers. You have also Ibo, every tribe. But if you go with God, Partnership is critical, partnership is important, and partnership must be led by God. No wonder that the GO has partners, and he will always talk about it. Do you know that it is partnership that made the hand of Moses to be lifted, and he was able to wage war? There are businesses you cannot do on your own and you need to have proper grounding. Don't give away too much and do not be too greedy. Like Jesus, be factual when selling yourself. The most, in, the, the most highly uh, honest salesman that I've ever seen or heard about is Jesus Christ. He will tell you the way it is. And he will tell you if you can't take it, you better leave. But you package yourself, you make it look good, you say everything, you say everything in the pros, but you are not talking about the cons. Sooner or later, your partners will see through it and there will be crisis. Companies in Africa are devalued by 40%. If you have a company in Africa, they see you, if you are worth 400, 100 billion, they see you as a 100 billion company. Not because of the exchange rate, but because of perception. I doubt if there's anybody here that does not have somebody living abroad. Why do you have John Doe Nigeria Limited? And you don't ask your brother to help you establish John Doe American Limited. Sooner or later, somebody in America will need the help of the John Doe Nigeria. And the John Doe Nigeria will need to get supplies from the John Doe America. Don't just keep asking them to send you money. There are things they can do to establish a symbiotic relationship that will make your 100 million company to be seen as 100 million. I tested it when I was abroad. I had a company known as Concave Communication in Nigeria. I had Concave Communications abroad. When people wanted to send traffic, voice traffic to Nigeria, they started looking for somebody that is based in Nigeria. And I raised my hand. I'm here. When I go here, I need somebody to terminate calls in America. Of course, there's Concave America. And through that, partners were able to join. Something that I started with probably maybe $500. I think now it's worth about, uh, I don't know, maybe a couple of million dollars in value. Because of a strategic decision, just a decision. It's not... It's not a physical investment. So if you say, how can I do it? There is no money. 
I didn't do it with money. It took the wisdom of God, the understanding of God, and the knowledge of God. Number four, be positioned right. Be positioned right. And who is the best example for this position right? Nehemiah. In Nehemiah chapter 2, this man wanted to go back to Jerusalem to go and build Jerusalem. There is a power that will take a decision in the person of King Artaxerxes. The man went to the king in the right position. If you read chapter 2, the queen was sitting next to the king. The man brought wine to the king. It is in the presence of the king, the wife, and wine that he started frowning. The man was in a good mood. Wine plus his wife. What a better combination. So, Mr. Why are you frowning? He did not tell him, oh, Jerusalem is burning. If he had said so, the queen would have reminded the king, remember your father said Jerusalem must not be rebuilt. He now told the king what is important to the king. Remember, this king is a Phoenician king. The cherished ancestors. The cherished father. So he said, is, is, is the problem with my ancestors? Is the problem with my father? My father's land. My ancestors land. Of course, it's just like you coming to Oshimawe and you are trying to get something from him. And you don't remind him that war has never conquered Ondo. If you start from the premise, he will listen. Particularly if the wife who is from Owo is sitting next to him. Then you can present your case. You want promotion, you want to go and meet the PAMSEC. PAMSEC, uh, this my promotion has been delayed for too long. No. When I wanted to get land from the government, I met with them and I said, you guys have been talking of empowerment of youth. You governor, you will spend eight years. You will soon leave. What will be your legacy? Ah, the man, a politician, went, oh, this must be this, this, and exactly. But how do we do that? This youth must find a place to work. And for them to work, they need land. This land, what are you doing with it? He said, I, he said, I wonder, oh, the place is there, nobody is taking it. There's a way we can turn this around using outgrowers system. We can employ youth. They can have one hectare, two hectares, and develop themselves. Today, I have 1,000 hectares from him. Because you must say the right thing to get the right result. If you are to be promoted, don't go there as a state unionist and tell him your right to have promotion. He will tell you 1,000 reasons why you will not be promoted. May God help us in Jesus' name. He prepared an answer and God used the king to answer him. I will now start rounding up. There are some relationships you must burn. There are some, they, 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 in the social balance, don't burn bridges. There are some bridges that are not worth crossing. There are some bridges that are not worth crossing. I have a triangular movement in this town. My home, the factory, and the church. But adventure, there's somebody so important and I attend this event. Me, that I've been around for several months, you see my friends say, ah, 
you came? Where have you been? When did you arrive? Of course, my pastor sees me every Sunday. But this man has not seen me for months. And he thinks, because, the, because as, we said, as we studied in the, in, the, in, the, in the Sunday school, I want to be a beautiful bride. I don't want to be tainted. I don't want to exist in a place where, in the midst of Asun, in the midst of uh, all these other things, we start running our mouth. There are bridges you need to burn. Many stations of call where you don't have a healthy relationship with God, with your spouse, and others that are important. Be strong. Be strong. Proverbs 24.10. Proverbs 24.10. It says, if thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. This period is a, is a period of adversity, period of scarcity, period of inflation, period of challenges. Please be strong. As Jesus Christ said in Luke chapter 9, verse 62. Luke 9, 62. No man having put his hand to the plow and looking back, is fit for the kingdom. The, the beautiful thing is that you are all living stones that Daniel was talking about that destroyed the statutes of Nebuchadnezzar. Brethren, there are seven mountains that are confronting all of us. And you must be ready to be the stone that will bring it down. There is a mountain of entertainment. They feed us with what will make us lose the kingdom. There's the media. There's the mountain of family. The rat race within the family. There's the mountain of politics. There's the mountain of economics. There's the mountain of education. And believe it or not, there's the mountain of religion. There's a system set up against you and I. That may, not, that may make it difficult for, for us to be established in abundance, we must break it down. We are the living stone that Daniel spoke about in Daniel 2, chapter, chapter 2, verse 34. Daniel 2, 34. We are the holy priesthood that Peter spoke about in 1 Peter 2, 5. 1 Peter 2, 5. You are going out as a sheep. There will be bribery. There will be corruption. Uh, the land I was talking about, suddenly I was abroad. I had to call my pastor. Ah, sir, that land, they said they want to take it away from me. And I intentionally told him, because I know what he will do, that nobody will do it while I have him. Ah, why am I in this church, if some civil servants can just rise up. And what was the reason? Bribery and corruption. So you'll be confronted with that. And God that gave me victory will give you victory as well. Amen. The mountains are ageless. Um, when you say Satan should fall and die, he knows this, he knows this world before you is ageless. So you must overcome it easily. Ladies and boys, I use that intentionally. You, have, you said you don't have, you don't have, you are not married and you are looking for a partner. And you are still wearing the same hairstyle that you are, you are wearing when you are in high school. It doesn't work. Did you think Esther was a church girl? Can you imagine the kind of dance the Esther would have danced that would make the head of the king to turn? I'm not asking you to compromise. Please get me right. But I know Beyonce wouldn't have been able to defeat Esther on that day. Guys, look clean. I remember in those days, the days with no, no issue of, uh, what do they call it now? Uh, uh, make, makeup artist. 
We didn't have, our ladies didn't have it. All they had was unku cream and unku powder. Fortunately, they were not riding Okada to come to their, so no, nothing will blow it away. We still had taxis. So she will still be fresh when she arrives. Now, there is a makeup artist. Our ladies cannot even do their gilly anymore. So, change with the time. Try and remember what the Bible says about snake. It said be wise like snake. What, what is special about it? It's because it can camouflage, it can change its skin, and it's still the same skin. It's the same, it's the same uh, snake. Please, in your journey towards abundance, remember abundance is not only money. If you are established in abundance as a girl, it means you will be rich, it, is, it means you have the right spouse, it means you will prosper in health, and your soul will prosper. So, brace up. Let your tomorrow be established today. Because there is the eternity of the past. There is the eternity of the present. And there is the eternity of the future. Your eternity of the future will be determined by what you do with the eternity of today. No wonder there is a particular, for you that are in business, let customer service be sound. I'm amazed to discover that there is a restaurant in Japan. No, no, I don't know if I can pronounce the name. Nishiyama Kenkan or something like that. It was established in 705 AD and is still standing. It's regarded as the oldest, is in the Guinness Book of Record as the oldest surviving restaurant in the world. You have a shop. Today is no more because you are using deferred weights that God says is an abomination. Or you are cheating, which God says is an abomination. Please, remember in your journey, do not try to solve a problem, or an assumed problem, but try to solve a proper problem. An assumed problem will make a young man to start selling cars because his uncle is selling cars. He's assuming that the, my uncle is doing well, so I also want to sell cars. And that's the problem with Africa. We do business with an assumption. Obasan just said a few days ago, he said everything he had become in life has been accidental. He went into the army accidentally. That he even went to school accidentally. That the only thing he did intentionally is farming. And I'm bold to say to you that when, when Proverbs 16.3 says, Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. I have committed my works in agribusiness. What are you committing that you want God to establish? There's nobody here to the best of my knowledge, that does not have a family farm. Many of us, we, we outsource it to the, uh, I don't know, that, uh, is there a tribe known as Agatus? I think there are people like that. You give it to them. Bring me kegs of uh, oil every year. The man agreed to bring 10 every year. First year, he brought the 10. Second year, he brought nine. Third year, he brought it, and you start complaining. The man doesn't know anything about palm trees. He knows yam, tubers. And when he's planting the yam, you have given him, he only needs land for yam. And the yam is competing with the nutrients of the land. You think the man is cheating you. Your, plant, your oil palm is getting sterile. So why not take decision to take possession of what your father had given you and turn it to wealth. The Lord will establish you in Jesus' name.